Hi, Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. You are now watching the video of Biodiversity Part 2 where in this video you are going to learn about the biodiversity in Malaysia, levels of biodiversity, importance of biodiversity, threats of biodiversity and last but not least the conservation of biodiversity. So, what is biodiversity? This term derived from words biological and diversity. Biodiversity is defined as the variation among organisms from all sources including terrestrial, marine and other aquatic ecosystems and the ecological complexes of which they are part. Terrestrial biodiversity is usually greater near the equator, which is the result of warm climate and high primary productivity. Let's talk about the biodiversity in Malaysia itself. Do you know that Malaysia has been recognized as one of the 12 known megadiversity countries in the world? Malaysia is a home to huge diversity of flora and fauna that inhabiting a variety of ecosystems such as lowland forests, mountain forests, mangrove forests, pit swamp forests and Sulu Sulawesi seas. Malaysia also is one of the biodiversity hotspots in the world. So what hotspots means? Biodiversity hotspot is a relatively small area with numerous endemic species a large number of endangered species and threatened species and mostly located in tropical region. As you can see in the notes part, these are the definition of terms used in this slide. Endemic refers to the local species that not found anywhere else in the world. Endangered refers to the species that is at risk of extinction and threatened refers to the species that is likely to become endangered. As mentioned earlier in this video, terrestrial biodiversity is usually greater near the equator mainly because of the climate factor and the environment condition. As you can see in this world map, our beloved country Malaysia lies entirely in the equatorial zone that highlighted in red shades with an average daily temperature varying from 21 degrees celsius to 32 degrees celsius throughout malaysia this is the greatest factor that makes malaysia as one of the country with huge diversity here are some of the data on the number of species in malaysia obtained from the Ministry of Natural Resource and Environment Malaysia. Biodiversity divide into three levels. They are genetic diversity, species diversity, and ecosystem diversity. Let's have a detailed look at every level. We begin with the first level, genetic diversity. Genetic diversity is genetic variety within species, among individuals within a given population, and among geographically separate population. Population with a bigger gene pool, which means they have more different allele of each gene, have greater genetic diversity. Gene pool refers to a collection of different genes within an interbreeding population. The second level is species diversity. Species diversity is defined as the number of species in an ecosystem or across biosphere. Species richness and species abundance are the two factors that are considered when measuring species diversity. Species richness defined as the number of different species in a particular area. Species abundance defined as the number of individuals in each species. For example, in the diagram given, we can see that these two communities are composed of the same species and are identical in regards to species richness. 
They have four different species of trees. However, they differ in regards to species abundance. Community 2 is mostly composed of species A. Species A has high species abundance compared to species B, C and D. If we look at community 1, each of the four species contributes to 25% of the population. The abundance of each species is more evenly distributed than community 1. While both communities have the same species richness, community 1 will have greater diversity due to the species abundance of each species present. The third level is ecosystem diversity. It is the variety of ecosystem found on Earth and the interaction within and between ecosystems. Ecosystem diversity addresses the interaction between biotic properties, such as water, soils, and air, and abiotic properties, such as animals, plants, and microorganisms. These are some of the ecosystems present in Malaysia. Coral reef, mangrove, peat swamp, rainforest, and mountain. Biodiversity boosts ecosystem productivity where each species, no matter how small, all have an important role to play. Here are some of lists of the importance of biodiversity. Food. Food is one of the many great things that biodiversity provides. Biodiversity plays a crucial role in human nutrition through its influence on world food production. Health. Aspirin, penicillin, and thousands of other medicines are derived from nature. In fact, over half of all prescription drugs are made from plants, animals, and microorganisms. Forests. Biodiversity plays an important role as a natural gene pool habitat provider, prevents soil erosion, mitigate climate change, carbon cycle, and watershed protection. Tourism industry. Biodiversity contributes significantly to the attractiveness of most types of tourism. Biotechnology. Some genetic resources from agricultural species can be used to improve crops qualities, for example, in the production of pest and disease resistant genes. Indigenous knowledge. Indigenous people highly depends on the biodiversity. The uniqueness of indigenous people is they have the knowledge to sustain the environment around them while utilizing and interacting with the resources. Now, we will discuss on the four major threats to biodiversity. Habitat destruction, overexploitation, introduced species, and global change. We begin with the major threats of biodiversity, habitat destruction. Damaging human activity continues to enroach on natural environment thereby destroying the habitats of countless species. The human activities such as agriculture, urban development, forestry, mining and pollution contribute to the destruction. These may lead to the habitat fragmentation by which the breakdown of large areas of habitat into small isolated segments. It reduces the ability for the habitat to support the species. Nonetheless, age effect is another consequences where the species from the surrounding fragmented area may intrude into the habitat, cause native organism exposed to other organism which may be predator or parasite, thus trophic balance between organisms are affected. Next, overexploitation. Excessive use of species that have economic value in other words, the species has been used up at the rate faster than natural population can recover. Humankind relentless consumption of resources such as timber, oil, and minerals is continuing to destroy natural habitats around the globe. We are also putting enormous pressure on populations of wild species, 
both by wildlife poaching and by large-scale industrial fishing in our seas. Wildlife poaching still presents a huge threat to many species, including rhinos, tigers, and pangolins. Overfishing is a large-scale industrial fishing in seas, for example, the activity of fishing the juvenile fishes for the live reef fish trade increases the impacts of high fishing efforts as well as commercial fishing. Another types of fishing is destructive fishing. Fish bombing and cyanide fishing are still carried out which affect coral reefs, mangroves and coastal waters. These are some overexploitation activities by human look like overfishing, destructive fishing, recreational hunting, and the overuse of wild animal for food and medicine. We move to the other thread, introduction of new species. Non-native species, also known as new species, were introduced in an ecosystem to control pests for hunting, leisure or ornamental reasons. These can have direct effects on native species, for example by predation or can upset the nature ecological balance. Competition for the resources and habitat will occur among native and non-native species. Non-native species can also introduce diseases and parasites to which native population may have no resistance. Pollution As population increase, the disposal of waste from household, agriculture and industry becomes an increasingly serious issue. Our oceans are becoming choked with plastic waste, which is killing millions of animals from sea turtles to whales. Acid precipitation in the form of rain, snow or fog with a pH less than 5.2. These effects by the burning of wood and fuels. Chemicals from industry and agriculture, such as pesticides, secrete into soils and groundwater which can end up in drinking water, and pesticide spray can drift and pollute the air. Organic pollutants from sewage include pharmaceutical effluents, surfactants, organic solvents, hydrocarbons, esters and alcohols. Acid waste seeping from mines, thermal pollution from the heated wastewater of industrial plants, radioactive contamination, greenhouse gases and climate change, noise and light pollution that also affecting the lives of living organisms. Biodiversity conservation is the protection and management of biodiversity to obtain resources for sustainable development. Conservation of biodiversity is very important because of various reasons. First, for utilitarian pragmatic reason, to ensure that an ecosystem can supply enough sources for food, medicine, and industrial product. For ecological reasons, conserving forests will protect the watershed, balance the biogeochemical cycles, thus preventing erosion and flooding. Aesthetic reason, Ecosystems in their natural state provide pleasure and are thought to be essential for human beings. Ecotourism is gaining much public interest and recreational area. Ethical and moral reason, protecting wildlife and preserving it for future generations also means that the animal we love don't become a distant memory. Humans may be a cause of biodiversity loss, but we can also be the solution. There are four types of biodiversity conservation. In situ, the conservation activities of species in their natural habitat in the wild. Ex situ, conservation activities that involve removing the species from its natural habitat. Legislation, 
conservation by law and policy enforcement, and roles of non-government organization, conservation by the initiatives, activities, and program of NGO. In situ conservation, this type of conservation involves the establishment of parks and reserves to protect and preserve threatened and endangered species in its natural environment. Malaysia have four types of park and reserves. There are National Park, Marine Park, Malaysia's Permanent Reserve Forest, and Wildlife Sanctuaries. For ex situ conservation, it involves the establishment of conservation area in human controlled settings. The example of ex situ conservation are zoos, botanical garden, and aquaria. These places also can function as recreational area and can provide the public with informal education to understand the importance of biodiversity. Other than that, seed bank gene bank, tissue bank, long-term captive breeding and cryopreservation of gametes is conducted by many research institutes such as Mardi and Frim to help in the conservation. Conservation by legislation and enforcement. Some countries have law to preserve and conserve rare, endangered or threatened species. For example, Endangered Species Act in the USA. Global agencies and organizations such as the United Nations propose strategies for biodiversity conservation and draw up treaties which are signed by most member countries. Hence, enforcement of the law is minimal due to political interference and commercial interests. Last but not least, the roles of non-government organization. Organization such as International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural, IUCN, and World Wildlife Fund, WWF, play an important role in educating people the importance of biodiversity conservation. IUCN plays a role in the implementation of several international conventions on nature, conservation, and biodiversity. WWF works to help governments and authorities crack down on wildlife crime. They maintain the data on the status of threatened or endangered species in the red data books and aid the countries that have the conservation campaign such as Project Tiger and Project Elephant. We already reaching the end of this chapter. So, let's do our part to protect and preserve biodiversity. Even small action daily will have a great impact in future. Thank you for watching this video. Assalamualaikum and have a good day. Bye-bye.